Welcome to the Wits and Weights podcast, where we discuss getting strong and healthy with strength training and sustainable nutrition. I'm your host, Philip Pape, and in each episode, we examine strategies to help you achieve physical self-mastery through a healthy skepticism of the fitness industry and a commitment to consistent nutrition and training for sustainable results. Welcome to another episode of Wits and Weights. On today's episode, I am joined by Yosh, whom I've known for many years uh, because we have an association with Romeo Athletics. Him as a coach and trainer and myself as a longtime member. And I'm really excited that we made this happen because we can sit down and talk about coaching, the fitness industry, uh, optimizing your health, training, wherever the conversation takes us. Yosh is a certified sports performance coach and personal trainer at Romeo Athletics, which is in Connecticut. And through his professional career as a behavioral counselor and group fitness coach, Yosh learned about the importance of mental health and wellness, and now serves as a guide and mentor to others on their own fitness journey. Yosh, man, thank you for coming on the podcast. Philip, what's good, man? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so I've I've known you for years. We've chatted a lot, um, but we haven't really gotten into your background and your story and kind of who you are as a coach. So I think we're going to explore that today. And people are going to learn a lot and maybe some strategies along the way. So let's just start with your background and expertise, where they intersect, right? Which, from my perspective, looks like fitness, coaching, and mental health, uh, which is, I think is an interesting angle that we can explore. So what's your story? What inspired you to guide and mentor others in the way that you do? So I had re- before I moved to Enfield, to uh, Romeo Athletics, I had lived in Boston for over a decade, and, and my career really started there as a behavioral counselor at an organization called Bay Cove Academy. Uh, and mm-hmm. I got a recommendation um, from a previous company I worked for in Berkshire County called Hillcrest Educational Centers. So like that was sort of the breadth of my, uh, I joke because I, I feel like if, if fitness and, and that weren't a thing, I'd be unemployable. Like hmm. th- those are those are really the only two things I've dabbled in. So I started at Bakeover Academy, uh, and then somewhere down within my I would say my first year there, having known Rome and 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 what he does with his gym at the time, I had reached out to him and said like, Hey man, I'd like to follow your programming. If you could coach me up, that'd be great. Uh, I, I didn't go into detail about why, but really because the the job itself uh, as a as a counselor is, is pretty heavy we we mm-hmm. we treated some uh pretty pretty hard youth from the greater boston area with very severe learning and behavioral uh difficulties so i mean age we we would we'd be treating kids anywhere from 12 years old to tw- uh 20 years old because after that they would age out of the program mm-hmm. the state couldn't uh provide resources or funding for any any child over the age of 20 uh so did that for again probably the same amount of time that i was training and coaching in the boston area so once i got in with rome started working out i said oh you know what it'd probably be better not that things weren't well, the program wasn't well on that side, but as I continued to do the behavioral counseling and that work, he had suggested that I go to CrossFit Fenway, which was okay. maybe a mile and a half down from where I worked. So I joined that as my first affiliate and kind of did the, the training, coaching, and the, the, the therapeutic stuff, like pretty much like right in line with each other. All right, cool. And and so for those listening, when you say Rome, you're talking about Andrew Romeo. He's the CEO and head coach yeah, of, yeah. you know, just, just for people, because people, I have an international following here, <laughs> millions <laughs> of people all over the world and maybe beyond listening. Uh, but for anybody in the, the Northeast or in Connecticut, it's Romeo Athletics, um, Andrew Romeo, it's, it's named after him. So Yosh is there in the Enfield facility and they have another a facility opening up by the time this goes out, it might be open already in Avon. So anyway, that sounds pretty cool how, um, you know, your background led you to another area that you're also passionate about. And then you get, got this opportunity from Rome. And then, so then you moved out here when mm-hmm. and started coaching here. I moved out here in June of 2019. Okay. Yeah. I, May was, I gave my 
uh, it was funny because I had uh, one of the great things about my previous em- employer, they would have weekly supervisions. It kind of like feedback loops, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, her name was Carol. She walked in and I said, hey, I have some something to tell you. And she goes, oh, no, you're leaving. I'm, like, yep, I'm, gonna <laughs> give- <knew> <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you guys 30 days. I'm going to help train the next uh, person who's going to fill my spot. But yeah, so I moved here. I had to, I had to settle up some things uh, with where I was living in, in Southie at the time and then had to get that beater of a car that I'm sure you saw when mm-hmm. I first moved down here. Um, so right around like the first week of June. Okay. In 2019. So you, you left with class from your old job. That's the way to do it. You know, yep. not burning bridges, helping to train the next folks. And then, you know, time dilation from COVID is crazy because I feel like I've known you a lot longer than that. <laughs> and it's, uh, that's three years. Okay. Um, so you got there, not even a year before everything got locked down. <laughs> I know. So it, yeah. we, Roman, uh, Roman, I joke about that all the time. And Kate to uh, uh, Rome's wife, um, because I mean, and, and, and people should know too, that this wasn't just like a random email that he sent me said, Hey, come work for me. We, we had been, Rome has been my coach and my own like pro he programmed for me probably the same amount of time I was in living in Boston. So probably cl- like a decade if uh, plus even. And, you know, we would dabble in that conversation and he would tell me that there might be some work available. And, and again, I was just a, uh, I was in Jesus. I was in my early twenties at that point when we had that first conversation Mm -hmm. uh, and I just wasn't ready to leave the city yet. So like this had been going on for a while before I actually uh, was able to um, move down here. So I had known like you and other members of the gym and kind of uh, the, the the greater community there for a really long time. Cool. Yeah. and, And we, we saw each other a lot because you were there in the morning and I would go in usually around seven and for those who listen to the show, they know I they know I have a home gym, so that's usually where I work out these days. But I still have a great relationship with you and the other coaches there uh, at Rome Athletics with with nutrition and with with everything with the website. Um, so I would see you in the morning, and you know we we chatted, but we didn't really go dive deep into you as a coach. So I want to get a little bit into the training and programming side of things. You know, what is your approach as a coach to? training programming do you work with specific types of clients do you work with specific performance goals and so on sure so i would say right now my current client load uh they're more the general population uh Mm -hmm. and by that i mean these are individuals who come in with no one like particular skill set they want to focus on um and, and 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 truthfully circling back to what you said about covid like the the vast majority of people who I train right now um, have really kind of come off of the uh, kind of like the onset of COVID where they were forced to do nothing mm-hmm. and they realized how much their health was deteriorating in some in some um, in some ways. So they just they needed more, again for their like mental health to get healthier and really as broad of a stroke that, that, um, you know, paints it's, it's, it's been, it's been cool to get to build a relationship based on like the fact that all of us went through the same thing. And now mm-hmm. like, Hey, the, the a gym or the fitness industry is super vulnerable to begin with. Like as someone new approaching like yourself to say like, Hey, Hey, Philip, I need some help with some, some uh, fitness or nutritious nutrition, excuse me, coaching. So yeah, for the most part, they're all they're They don't have any specific skills that they want to focus mm-hmm. on. They they're looking for the bigger picture. And the great thing about what we do is we can do the fitness piece and also have like a mentoring slash coaching side to it. So I don't just take my clients in, you know, it's just a workout and then see you Friday. Right. We, we, we talk about a lot during our sessions. Um, we, try and bounce ideas off of one another so that I know and that they're aware of that I'm still doing right by them as far as uh, what their goals are. Uh, And as far as how I train them, you know, I have 
very, very basic like principles like rooted in like the strength and conditioning community. Um, and again, like it's kind of the, I know like what the, the meat and potatoes of, 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 a, of a workout that I want them to do. Uh, and then no matter, regardless of like what their training goals are, um, so that's all the, the, like the larger lifts, the bigger movers, like the squatting, mm-hmm. the deadlifting again. And this is of course to say that they all are, have an appropriate amount of, 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 uh, manner to like perform those movements safely. So there's the, the, there's a hierarchy typically that I like to follow first in like moving well, exploring where any limitations are as far as like movement patterns are concerned like we can add then, you know, some, add a little bit of intensity or a little bit of, 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 of load to that and then kind of increase the volume or the speed at that point. So it, it, it's really, again, if we didn't have those, that first conversation with them to begin with about like, Hey, Philip, tell me more about yourself. Like, what are you here for? What are your biggest limiting factors, concerns, and what kind of experience do you want to have with me? Cool. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, what I'm hearing is it's highly individualized, but there are principles you follow, right? There's principles of strength and Mm -hmm. function uh, and overall movement mechanics, right? But you have to take each person in and it makes sense. The general population is uh, the majority of people, right? Like I think most people Mm -hmm. going through, even on the nutrition side are not saying, Hey, I have a bodybuilding show that, or or a CrossFit competition. That's a tiny slice of the population. So it totally makes sense. You do that. And then, you know, for people watching or listening, you know, what Yosha is saying is you could, you could get a template online that tells you like, here are the main lifts and it's, it's going to take you a decent, um, it's going to take you pretty far as a beginner. If you're like totally healthy, you have no limitations and you go for a certain length of time, but at some point you're going to probably hit a wall or get injured or something that someone like Yosh can come in and say, Hey, this is you, this is how you move. This is, you know, how we can work mm-hmm. together. So, um, I really like that. And I see how you work with your clients all the time. And it, it looks like it's more than just, Hey, do these three sets. I'm, I'm here watching you. It's, you know, let's chat, let's figure it out. Let's, um, and you're not, you're not like wasting time. You know, I know some trainers just like chat to chat, but you're actually trying to get something out of it for your client. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, Cause they're paying you for it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At the, at the end of the, at the end of the day that they, they have entrusted uh, myself or one of the other coaches with, with that level of vulnerability, right? Like yeah, it, it, it's hard enough to, it, it, it's hard enough to say like, I need help in, in anything. Um, but yeah. espe- especially with like nutrition coaching and, and, and fitness. Uh, so we, I, you know, we really try and do as much as we can with that first. So it's not overlooked down the road. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, all right, Philip, like we're going to, I'm going to put you on this like brick house program and we're going to, uh, we're going to get you strong, fast, powerful, like, okay, that's well and good. But you know, there, there's other things that like, I need to, to work on. It would help if, you know, not only if we, if you coach me through what we're doing, exercise selection, pairing order, et cetera, like wise, like that's fine, but tell me how, where this is going to carry me outside of the gym and, and, and in other relationships that I, uh, may have with people that have nothing to do with, with exercise. Right. Right. It's not all, it's not all about how much you can deadlift. Right. But can you walk up the stairs at the uh, Patriots game or whatever your team is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. So you mentioned mental health and, and just health in general. So what, what lessons have you learned as a behavioral counselor that you were talking about in Boston that apply to fitness and personal training and then, you know, kind of what it means to be healthy and uh, that optimal health that you were talking about? You know, I think more, there are enough people that know all like the physiological effects of how exercise like, you know, triggers hormones that make us like feel happy and better. But I, unless you have seen some, like seen that change in someone or seen that change in yourself, a lot of that is kind of mute. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, if I exercise for half an hour a day, doing aerobic, anaerobic strength training workout, like I'll feel happier. Right. And, and, and. I think, again, some of that gets overlooked because we, number one, I, a lot of us don't have our own baseline to go off of to begin with. So working at that, even again, like through that first year at the job, I noticed 
how much of that work I was taking with me, like at the end of the day, back home into the weekend. And then at some point it just felt like it was, everything just like bled into one another. And the first, when I was able to introduce uh, the, the, the extra more high intensity exercise into my, uh, I think I was doing it like three or four days a week, you know, a lot of that helped me understand that there are really healthy outlets. So go, go and use them, see Mm -hmm. how they, see how you fit them into your, uh, see how you fit them into your week. And then again, like that baseline now is week to week. I'm not taking all of that. I'm not taking work home with me. I'm not taking all that cathartic, like nasty stuff into conversations with other people. Uh, so it was, I think when I first, when I first kind of had the idea that like, Oh, like shit, this is, this stuff is working. Um, I just was able to start having better conversations with people at work and at the gym again, like at work about what I do at the gym and then vice versa, like at the gym or in a class, like telling people like what I do for work. And, mm-hmm. and prior to that, it was just like, you know, like I'm at a, it was abstract. It was just theory. Yeah. I'm at, right? a, I'm yeah. at a sh- shitty job. I don't feel good or like, well, yeah, I don't have time to work out, so I don't know how to make it better. <laughs> All right. So one of the missions of this podcast is acknowledging that we were skept- pretty skeptical of the fitness industry, right? And we do everything possible to split out what works, the things that actually work from all the noise and nonsense and all those darn um, influencers on the internet. So what are your sure. thoughts? What are, you, what are your thoughts on the industry or overall, the state of the fitness industry or anything around, you know, just kind of when you have clients coming in and they, they, ask you questions that you're like, they've been Googling stuff again. (laughs) Hey, listeners, this is Philip Pape, and I'm excited to announce our upcoming totally free 21-day challenge starting December 1st. It's called the Wits and Weights No Diet Holiday Body Recomp Challenge. This challenge is about learning how to achieve body recomposition, that's building muscle and losing fat at the same time without dieting or restriction throughout the holidays. I'll be giving you free videos, guides, and personalized coaching in a private group chat to help you enjoy the holidays while being satisfied and guilt-free. The kickoff call is Friday, November 17, and the link to enroll is in the show notes. No matter what episode you are listening to, don't worry. If you're hearing this after November 17, you can still register and get access to the replay and resources before the challenge starts on December 1st. Again, to join the Wits and Weights No Diet Holiday Body Recomp Challenge to build muscle and lose fat without dieting through the holidays, click the link in my show notes. Now back to the episode. I... I would like to think it's been, I'd like to think it's getting better. Uh, and, but I, I also like, I'm not smart enough to know all the trajectories right now, only like what is in front of us and like what we are, what we're dealing with. Um, I think, I think a huge issue has been the kind of the format that social media has played. And, and, and I, I, I see that at times as a as a vessel for people to just absorb information and then you can you can just regurgitate it back out mm-hmm. at any speed to anybody. Um you don't need to care like who it goes to, who who it affects to some degree. Um and then it just all settles to various communities or people that, you know, are very uh I guess susceptible to to this quick feed of information because mm-hmm. as human beings, right? Like we do a very poor job at like waiting and um, hard work in the sense that like if something yeah, means, true. We want a quick fix, right? Yeah. <laughs> if something means a lot to me, I don't want to yeah. spend that much time to get there. So I, it that's always been a tough question for me to answer, only because you know when you, when you open up Facebook or you open up Instagram, 
there are a number of of influencers just pushing like their own agenda. And I would say more than half of them, or, or, or well more than half of them, have been able to dupe the general public into thinking that they care about a specific cause or they care about you. And then they're like side peddling supplements or, supplements, or, yeah, or, right. or meal pl- or, or whatever, you know, or, sure. or, or workouts. Um, and, and I, and I don't like, listen, I, when I first started, I made the same mistakes again, like hundreds and, and thousands of times. And mm-hmm. it's just at this point, like you said, like at, at this point in the fitness industry, like we've, you know, we've both had enough skin in the game to, to vi- have much more valuable and objective feedback to people like no person to sell you like a two week like, detox or like strength program is really really cares about like who you are and then lo- the longevity of your of your goals so I, I i will say i've met a lot of, of of super super generous and kind people who are also great coaches and also great mentors and the fact that they're out there doing their thing to their community does it does uh provide like just a sense of relief like hey you know there there are more people like us doing the right thing they know how hard you have to work to provide and set an example uh the way we know can work over the course of 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 years or for the rest of your life right um and now like kind of the the uphill battle is still the the people who come in and are super reserved of your opinion because they watched i don't know they watched a a, a tiktok video on a, a mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah now you have to unravel that in some sort of it, rational it, way you know where they trust you mm-hmm. yeah you know i i like how you kind of spun that into a positive right because we don't definitely i never want to talk bad about other coaches uh and i mm-hmm. want to acknowledge the fact that you do have to be skeptical and aware of the content and where it's coming from and you would hope that over time the good coaches would start to take over and flood the the internet effectively and drown out the bad actors. And that as people get frustrated Mm -hmm. and try these things and blow a bunch of money on something that doesn't work, that eventually they're going to come around. Uh, But we know humans are humans. (laughs) There's always going to be some of that, right? (laughs) So. Hey, this is Philip Pape. And if you feel like you've put in effort to improve your health and fitness, but aren't getting results, I invite you to apply for one-on-one coaching to make real progress and get the body you desire. We'll work together to figure out what's missing so you can look better, perform better, and feel better. Just go to witsandweights.com slash coaching to learn about my program and apply today. Now back to the episode. Um, Cool. Yeah. And I just wanted to go off on that little tangent because you and I had also chatted about some of the technical aspects of how do we make videos and put captions on there. And like, Mm -hmm. we're trying to go out there on social media and put stuff out there um, just because it's one, it's the way a lot of people connect today. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. All right. So as coaches, right. We, we understand how valuable it is when someone finds a, a good coach that can work with them to get them progress quickly. And I know you said, you know, th- it, it takes time and it's, uh, to become sustainable. There's no quick fix, but you can still get there a lot faster oftentimes by having a coach than trying things for years on your own. So let's get into some of those specifics from your perspective, who would benefit from hiring a coach versus, Hey, this person's perfectly fine going, going on their own. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think any, anybody can, can find a value in, in hiring another professional mm-hmm. to uh, for whatever, for whatever goal or for whatever reason. And, 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 and I think in particular, it's because we, again, as like busy human beings, right? Like you have a, fa- I don't have, a, you have a family. Um, uh, I, I, I don't myself, but again, like there are certain stressors that we would gladly let other people um, <laughs> worry about and, 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 and take care of for mm-hmm. us. And again, like I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to pay for that service. So mm-hmm. I think what, uh, an example that comes to mind for me is, you know, I have typically like a very busy um, schedule most days of the week, right? And one of the things that I reach people who I reach out for, uh, excuse me, are like meal prep services, right? Mm-hmm. So 
looking for very like standardized, um, credible places that like offer ready to go meals. So like, okay, I'm going to pay for a box to get it. I bring them into work with me. If I have like a half an hour between clients, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, so that I, that I think to, to answer your question there, if you are, if you are struck, everybody struggles, whether we've done this for 10 years, 50 years, whether you're coming off the couch into the gym or um, again, like someone like myself, just getting back into a, a Olympic weightlifting program, right? Like you will always find, you will always find a way to put stress on yourself because you think that you can just take it all in. Uh, you can be that like you, that lone gunslinger type that you can handle it all. And at some point you're going to hit a wall and you won't be able to do it anymore. And I think at that point you either fall into one of two camps. Like I have to set healthier boundaries for myself and prioritize things that maybe I don't need to rush to do all the time. Or like, like you said, ask for help, like hire a coach, like buy a program from a coach because that being able to sustain the, the part of ourselves where we feel the need to just carry it on for lengths of time is incredibly stressful. And I've done it myself and, and, and it gets so like just physically draining uh, that I, I, I do believe at some point, no matter who you are, you can find an area of your life where you can at the very least reach out for, reach out for some guidance. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way you put that because, and it may not, it may not even be in a coach, right? It may be somebody, you know, it may be a friend. It may, it may be a one-time thing, right? I know, um, I had to work on my squat years ago and I, I went to, a, um, a specific coach specific to that type of squat one time. And it like, it was as if I had worked on it for two years in that one hour <laughs> because mm-hmm. the coach was so valuable and knew so much more than I did. And, and what you're saying is we have way too much to do in our life to be able to take everything on. And we can only rely on willpower, motivation, discipline, Mm -hmm. consistency, accountability to ourselves without anybody else. We can only do that for so long. And and that's where a coach can be valuable. Now, people listening to this podcast are like, wait a minute. Philip's been telling me how to do everything now for 35 episodes. He's got these great guests on like Yosh. And I want to do it on my own anyway. I don't want to hire a coach just yet. I do want to get into training. So let's just, let's just play devil's advocate for a second. And what are the top priorities then for someone who wants to get started, wants to be consistent, find success? And then, of course, at some point, they are going to need a tire coach, right? But if they want to yeah. get started on their own, what, what should they be doing? And this is going to sound against the grain, I guess. But first, you have to identify a problem, right? It, 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 I mean, it, and it has to be something that's super palpable, right, that has unfortunately brought you some, some grief in some area of your life. Um, so I think you identify a problem first, right? You, you have, you, you have to open up a bit and kind of make suggestions to yourself in, in, in way, in areas that it's deeply affected you and daily, daily habits, um, relationships, conversations, et cetera. Uh, I also think that if you're doing it, if you're serious about it and you, the, the goal is to ask for help, you need to ask other people for feedback on, on yourself. And that, and that's something that I've, I've learned even just recently through the, the, the leadership academies that I've had the opportunity and pleasure to go to up in, in, in Manhattan. Um, and, and one of the things that is a company called next jump. And one of the things that they drive is that we, you know, as, as individuals, it is almost impossible for, for you or for us to, to see our own blind spots. And part, part of the reason that it's so uh, difficult for people to ask to help is because they don't know what they need help with. And, mm-hmm. and, and so if we identify a problem, if we're asking for, for help <clears throat> or feedback from other people, right, then we can go into the area of t- to explore like where, how, how often we can make that happen. Nutrition, uh, fitness, exercise, like mental health, um, anything like uh, education, any part of that infrastructure. Um, and then throughout that process, uh, it, using us as an example, like we, we reach out or you would reach out to 
us sit down with myself or one of the other coaches and say like, Hey, you know, this is really what I've been struggling with for several months or several years. And now I'm at the point where I know I can't mitigate it myself. And I need, uh, I need other resources. Yeah. I need your help. I need, this is what I've been struggling with. And, and that's again, like going back to what we were talking about originally about how you, you know, why, it's, why is it important to build a relation relationships with people to understand like what they'll need long-term down the road. And this is a big reason. Uh, because when they come to ask for help, you just don't want to say like, well, Philip, I'm going to teach you how to squat and, you know, poof, like <laughs> mm-hmm. you're fit. Like, and so, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not suggesting to anyone that, you know, these conversations are easier that every person mm-hmm. that I have uh, the ability to meet with, like at all of a sudden, like all the layers get peeled back. Sure. Like that's probably, that's not the case at all. <laughs> so you yeah. have to do, and then like, that's where, again, now input, like, like someone like yourself or, or, or myself uh now we have to do right by them by asking the right questions man you just you just covered something this is like gold and i, I want the listener to be aware of what you just said because i asked you about where they would get started with with training and you you made it about mindset and you made it about like your true why your true goal your true gap in in from where you are now to where you want to be and mm-hmm you know, what I get from that is we all, we're all struggling in something, right? And let's say it's fat loss. So from a nutrition side, I've got tons of clients that'll come in and say, okay, I want to lose weight. Is that really the problem, right? Is the problem that you want to lose weight? Because I bet you've done things many times over the years that caused you to lose weight successfully. <laughs> okay. Dude. Short term, right? Is that the problem? And, and we have to dig in and say, no, it usually comes down to the mindset of, no, it's that you want to feel a certain way, that you want to be able to play mm-hmm. with your kids, you want to be able to do the things you do. And then you kind of back back into that. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? And at the end, the solution may be you need to get stronger and not even worry about the scale. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the person. Uh, but that's awesome, Yosh, like what you just talked about. It's and again, like that, it's through a lot of trial and error. And and Mm -hmm. you made a really good point too, because I even like, I mean, I've over the past that, you know, been on the scale, like gone on the in body, um, you know, looked at myself in the mirror and been like, "Hmm, I should like probably lose some weight too. But you know, why do I want to lose Mm -hmm. weight or gain weight? Like, what am I trying to objectify there? Um, and, and, and again, like I, what for, for me, that really turns into wh- what my habits are like. Mm-hmm. And if I have shitty habits, I'll just automatically explore like, well, I, I-, I need to lose some weight. Mm-hmm. And-, and-, and, but my, but my habits won't disappear. So like I, I, I told, I a hundred percent agree like bad, there that yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot more than just uh, right. Like that service layer um, strategy that you might have because, it's not always going to be, it's not always going to be that easy. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's great advice for, for folks listening, you know, really ponder that and ask yourself not only what my goal is that maybe that's the first step, like what my goal is, but then ask yourself why that's my goal. And maybe that'll lead to the real goal, the real short term process transformation that you need to go through. Um, okay. So let, let's, let's talk about some kind of fun stuff here in terms of the lifting side. You're an Olympic lifter. Um, I haven't really got into that on the show at all because I'm more focused on traditional lifts when I do talk about it. And, um, I have a love hate relationship with lifting from my, (laughs) from my history because I learned about it through CrossFit, which, you know, pros and cons of that. Um, and I remember you getting me to push myself on grace. Like, so people listening, grace is one of the wads in CrossFit where you do 30 clean and jerks for 135. Now, Today, that probably wouldn't feel so hard, but at the time I wasn't as strong and you were like, you, you got this, man. You got the, um, uh, the RX and you know, I could do it. It wasn't like I was going to injure myself. Um, and I got it done, but tell me why somebody would want to learn the Olympic lifts, the clean and jerk, the snatch, why they're valuable as part of somebody's programming. So I would, I mean, I think obviously like if, if, if you want to, if you want to compete in the sport of Olympic weightlifting, like, yes, of course, like I'm, you are going to have to learn the snatch. You're going to have to learn the clean and jerk. Uh, outside of that, honestly, I, I mean, 
there there is a layer of this where you know you see it it looks cool like and mm-hmm. and, and you learn it and they're fun like it is it is sure. a really really fun they're, they're fun exercises to learn develop uh develop an awareness for and then ultimately get better at because, you know it, whether it's a snatch or a clean things are so precise and get so technical that when mm-hmm. you even make uh when you succeed a lift by a pound by two pounds by five pounds even like that has taken a lot of freaking work to do um so i i would i would say to some degree people that if you're going to try something a little more challenging than your current trajectory offers you know one it'll it'll show you right off the bat how much discipline you have uh because it, it the the workouts that don't go as planned the weeks that don't go as planned we'll we'll see if you come back the next day and and, and pick up training where you left off um all right so it's a, it's a mental game for sure it's a skill it move is, it's mental yeah uh on the i i guess on the more objective side of things too like it, they're great i do believe that they're great exercises for certain athletes to to learn maybe not and by that i mean take a um I only say this because I was watching a, a, a video on Instagram today of a, an, uh, an Olympic uh, thrower. Mm-hmm. Like, like th- those guys are the most powerful athletes in the world. On uh, one of the variations of the Olympic lifts that they use is the um, hang power snatch, hang power clean, because mm-hmm. it'll start uh, just body placement wise. It'll start above the knee. You have very minimal. Um, length or distance of movement but you have to be super explosive and these are guys that are putting up several hundred pounds and i mean again it's it's humbling for someone like myself to see who's Mm. been training them for like 10 years and seeing like these college athletes come in and just do uh something so again in my eyes so incredible from such a a difficult position um so that's like being a more uh, that's being an athlete itself in certain sports i think Mm -hmm. are appropriate not 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 all sports like do i think that any that if you're a an elite caliber or professional athlete you could benefit from the use of them 100 percent. do i think that they're necessarily uh appropriate for every like program you might be following um not not in every case like that you have to, that you walk a very fine line there uh but i guess to to, to answer your question it it's always cool to take somebody out of say like just doing CrossFit and saying and, and and suggesting to them, hey, how do you feel about like getting really really strong over the next like three months? And yeah, of course, why wouldn't I want to do that? Cool, you're gonna stop doing all the shit that makes you hurt and lie on your back after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and I'm gonna te- <laughs> I'm gonna teach you something a little more fun. And at the end of that, I'm gonna put you in an actual competition to see how you do. So. I guess like someone who's open enough to try something different to help their performance in said area already, Mm -hmm. like you, it's going to be, it'll be a lot of fun and you're going to learn a lot about your, um, your level of tenacity as an, uh, as an athlete or as an individual. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, that would be me with a snatch constantly back in the day, not wanting to do the snatch, (laughs) uh, shoulders, man. But it's funny because there's, I've always had interesting opinions on that over, over the years too, mm-hmm. because, um, the Olympic lifts are kind of how I got into using barbells through CrossFit. Uh, it wasn't until years later that I just focused on pure, you know, strength movements just to build strength. But, um, there are some programs, I think like starting strength, for example, that incorporate the power clean early on, um, as, as the deadlift gets really heavy as an alternate pole movement in between, just so you're not deadlifting mm-hmm. like every session. Um, and yet, even though I, I've, I've seen arguments about that, it's like you, you still can only lift so much doing a power clean. So why wouldn't you do other poles or rows or something like that? But yeah, like yeah. I would, so that I, I agree. That one's tough for me too, because <clears throat> if I'm, if I'm looking at that and someone's saying like, Hey, if you're stalling on your deadlift, Yosh, do a power clean to, to, to do whatever, like number one, I don't, again, in my opinion, I don't think that that's truly necessary. I don't, I'm not like, what kind of adaptation am I going to get through that? Um, that being said, if you ask me like, Hey, is there a variation of a lift that could help the performance of my deadlift? Then I would teach someone how to do a pull. 
like just a mm-hmm. basic clean pull, either from risers or from like a, a like a from rack. a rack, yeah. or, uh, mm-hmm. or having the individual um, put straps on and go from some position above the knee, right? For because sure, yeah. Like that, yeah. and you've done rack, rack pulls. pulls before. Yeah. Like we overload rack pulls. To, uh, there are many reasons to, to to do rack pulls, but one of the uh, one of the larger benefits of a rack pull is to break past that sticking point of a either um, of a conventional deadlift, right? When you're uh, getting it towards your knee and people like look like they been yep. hit by a taser. Um, but again, like that, I, I think what you're what we're both saying really is it, it's a very you're going to have to know that athlete or that individual so well, number one, to even suggest that. On uh, mm-hmm. number two, then if they're able, even able to perform it well enough to get the adaptation or benefit from that, to then provide them a bigger deadlift. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that and and that, but that's where like good coaching comes in, right? Like for a sure. Good, a good a good coach is going to look at that and say, you, you know what, Philip? Like, yeah, you don't need to power clean one because your shoulders and your wrists can't take it, but I can teach you how to pull. Like, you definitely yep. have enough yep. power. Like, your back strong enough. Your 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 legs are strong enough to handle that kind of um position so we're just gonna shave some weight off to start and we're gonna teach you how to like produce some some speed to it so it just that that to me definitely comes down to the the level-headedness of 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 a coach to even put that in their athletes program cool yeah all good stuff i mean people listening they they wonder about that and i i know folks that do olympic lifts mainly for the the fun of it and the skill of it and the athleticism Mm -hmm. side of it which seems to be the dominant driver, especially if you want to compete. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff, man. Thanks for, we haven't covered that on the show yet. So I'm glad we covered it a little <laughs> bit, you know? Um, now last thing, or one of the last things, a little birdie told me that you're a foodie, uh, but your favorite <laughs> beer is Bud Light. Now I think you're in good company. <laughs> I think you're in good company on the food side with me. Okay. My wife could tell you, my wife makes most of our dinners these days and they're delicious, but she's not a foodie. She just, she, she finds a good recipe, throws it together, serves it to me. And I'm like commenting on the mouthfeel and the texture and the seasonings I taste and like all this stuff. I'm such a snob. So, but, um, is it true that you're a foodie and your favorite beer is not some barrel aged Imperial stout, but it really is Bud Light? Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Okay. I, I, I am a foodie. And, and, and again, like, I think this learn like, enjoying food has come off of like a part of being in the fitness industry. And, and to, to most people that probably seems obvious because like, if you're going to do the, the provide like your, yourself the physicality, like the, like the, the, the workouts that, and, and, and the training that you're going to do, like, Hey, why wouldn't they pair that with eating? Right. Like I yeah. would like to say that every, every fitness, I'd like to say that every fitness professional does that, but I don't know. Like, um, so the, 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 the food piece came from wanting to teach my, I've taught myself how to do the Olympic lifts. I want to teach myself how to, to cook. I want to, I, it's just, it's, it's more of a point of creativity. Cool. Um, and then yeah. when I learned, when I learned how to cook, um, I, and, and I'm not like, I, I, my, I don't have this huge continuum of, of what I'm good at, like in the kitchen, but like, I want to be able to do that for myself. I feel like that is a necessary task i guess yeah. that 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 all of us should at least try um yeah yeah the 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 foodie piece like is and and now like knowing how to do that it, it is giving me such a uh a more just the, every time um re- restaurants or or people suggesting that like hey like i know you enjoy like making this you should try it from here it, it, it makes it like I guess the whole experience much more enjoyable mm-hmm. uh, overall. <laughs> yeah, ga- and re- it, yeah, gastronomy or whatever it's called. I'm, I'm right with yeah, you, man. Seriously. I mean, I mean, there's there's a dark side to foodism in that you know you you eat out all the time because you love food so much. But the positive side, like you said, is if you learn to cook your own stuff and you really get creative, now you can now food can serve you. You know, it's not like you're mm-hmm. uh, just shoveling it in for the calories. You know, you're actually trying to make it an experience as part of life and Hey, we're human. So just make it work with your macros and with your goals and you're good to go. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, I think everyone should learn how to cook for themselves for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And eating at home is a good way to, to stick to your plan too. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So the, the second to last question I like to ask all guests is what one question did you wish I had asked and what is your answer? 
Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I, man, I don't. What? Um. Okay, I guess. Okay, what are? Do I have any personal? Tra- any personal um, what? Training goals. No oh, training goals. Yeah. Uh, and I guess. <laughs> I guess I don't at the moment. I, I I would. People may think that it would be to train for a like a, a weightlifting competition, and and mm-hmm. I I guess I have. I'm trying to get better at just enjoying the training for the sake of being able to train and getting stronger and healthier versus always needing a, uh, a spot to prove what I'm doing. Mm. Right. So if I'm training in the sport of Olympic weightlifting, yes, most people will find a meet to do, uh, and and compete. And I, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think if you're doing that sport that has that result or outcome to it, like 100%, you should challenge yourself and do that. Um, but I, right now, I just, I guess I don't have that goal in mind uh, yet. And I'm learning how to literally just do it for the sake of having fun um, lifting. Again. Awesome. <laughs> that's a great one. That's a great one, man. That's a great one because <laughs> yeah, I know I, I threw you for a loop and you're like, I, the, you, you came up with a question and then you realize the answer is you don't have a goal, but that was the, the money <laughs> answer because some people need to learn to just, just like, suck it up and, and enjoy the pro. I don't mean suck it up. I mean, enjoy the process, like live every day, each well, step along the way. It's not yeah, about the goal and, six months from now every time. Yeah. And I think this comes with, um, this just comes with experiences that mm-hmm. like damn near all of us do not have the ability to, uh, just focus on that part of our health and wellness, like just the training. Like mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. the other, the other, uh, if I'm booked morning to evening and I don't get to work out, how am I going to react to that? Right. Like at some point outside of the chance that you can become a professional at it or, or not a professional, but like be paid to do it. Um, you're going to have to prioritize other things like mm-hmm. your family, your, your work. Um, and, 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 and I'm, and I'm, I think over the last couple of years, I've done a lot better at saying like, you know what? the business that I'm helping to run right now um, takes precedent over my training. And that doesn't mean that I never train. It just means I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to like set intentional blocks out in the afternoon for myself just so I can work out. Like Mm -hmm. I will leave them. I want to fill them with as many people as I can. And then what I do every Thursday or Friday is go look into the next week and see like what time I do have available. And then I will put, um, uh, kind of strategize and, and move my train around that. And in most cases, I'm, I, I, I get a, a good, a good enough block of time every day to at least do something. I've started doing 20, 25 minutes of like aerobic work now, like in. Mm-hmm. So at the very least, if I can do that, it's a good day. Cool. Yeah. You got priorities and you're still making it work. So yep. awesome, man. Well, this has been a fun talk. I'm going to, Oh, the last, the last question of course is where, where can people learn about you? Yeah. So, uh, number one, if you are in, uh, the, uh, if you're Connecticut based and you're in the Enfield, some uh, Enfield, uh, Summers, Ellington, Suffield, uh, even if you are over in Springfield, Agawant, like if you're in the surrounding area, uh, uh, myself and my other colleagues are located at Romeo athletics at seven Moody road, uh, again, in Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, I do have a Facebook page that I don't really put much on. Um, and it's really just my name. You can it's just Yosh and my Instagram page where I put most of my clients training and my training on. Um, and my handle there is at the underscore uh, Y O and then five in place of the S and H. Yes. Uh, perfectly easy to remember Yosh. No, just kidding. I'll put it in the show notes. So we got Romeo <laughs> athletics. <laughs> we got Romeo athletics, which has a website, Romeo athletics dot fitness. For people, just if you want to find the address that Yosh mentioned, uh, Facebook, Yosh, and then Instagram mm-hmm. at the Yosh, where the S is a five and it's an underscore. I'm going to put it in the show notes so you don't have to remember that. And man, it was great talking to you, talking about all this stuff. Um, I appreciate you joining me. And of course, I'll be yeah, seeing awesome. you at Romeo Athletics. All right, man. Hell yeah, man. Thanks, dude. Thanks for listening to the show. Before you go, I have a quick favor to ask. If you enjoy the podcast, let me know by leaving a five-star review in Apple Podcasts and telling others about the show. Thanks again for joining me, Philip Pape, in this episode of Wits and Weights. I'll see you next time, and stay strong.